Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we're finding, learning, and turning the great strategy games. And today we're going to turn uh, back to War Plan Pacific, and I'm really enjoying playing this game. I wanted to jump back into it, do another episode. Now this game comes out April 29th, so I'm running out of time. Uh, you're going to have this game in your hands if you want. Uh, in the not too distant future and so I want to make sure we get through a lot of the main points of how to play the game so when it is available and you can get it uh, you're ready to go uh, that's kind of the whole point of the series also hell I just like playing the game so <laughs> we we've got that too uh, I would also like to find out eventually here whether the AI uh, is as formidable as it currently seems uh, and so let's move forward let's jump right in now I just wanted to talk about a few things up here because there are actually only you know I know I've thrown a lot at you in the first two episodes but there are really only a few screens that are super important now they have a lot of information and depth to them I feel like uh, but they're pretty easy to navigate and you've got the production screen and here you have the four majors the uh, the UK the US uh, the Soviet Union and China and then you have their allies okay the allies really need to have you ship things out to them and I got a few questions after the last episode that said, you know, why not just build United States things? Why, why send resources to Australia and have the Australians build them? Well, there's kind of a couple of different reasons to that. But the main reason really is time. And that is the United States does not have any transports. And if we go up here to deploy, you see the U.S. Well, that's the U.K. You see the U.S. does not get any transports until March 23rd. So these are two-week turns, right? We're on December 7th. I mean, we're talking like eight, eight turns, maybe nine turns before we have any transports at all at all and so you know that means we can't get any troops off the united states or off pearl harbor or anywhere else and the british are in the same dilemma the first time the british get transports are march 21st and so we've got to essentially build units in india and in australia uh, to hold off the Japanese onslaught until the Americans and the British get transports. It's, it's actually, you know, quite a historically accurate mechanic uh, by having these things in the build queue you have to send things to Australia. Now, how are we helping protect against that? Well, we put destroyers out here and they have a 24 hex radius where if any Japanese sh subs show up there, they can help protect the escorts here. And what does that mean? Well, you have these convoys that move through. Uh, for instance, if we look at convoys, the United States is now sending by trade agreement, we did this last time, the maximum. So 92 production and three oil to Australia. Well, it's got to move through this convoy zone all the way to Australia. And this convoy zone is the South Pacific. You can see it right down here when I'm over it. It's the South Pacific. And so if we go over here, South Pacific, if you have 10 escorts along with your convoy, essentially they, they can't be sunk. Uh, anything less than 10, and they can be those routes can really be messed with. Uh, they can be sunk. You can lose production. You can lose the oil, etc. Okay. Another thing to remember is when we say convoy or we say, I say convoys, I'm talking about this merchant Marines. And so this is essentially how many thousands of tons we can send through the convoy system. In this case, it's 43. Uh, so we have 43 going through, uh, you know, and being protected by these escorts. Now we have two left. <clears throat> and if we click, click over to the Brits here, you see they have 12 as well. Uh, they're probably going to want some in the Indian Ocean. So the U.S. and the Brits both have 12. You can also build these escorts. So if we go to back to the build here and we go to support. Now I've always talked about there being three different kinds of units. Army. Navy, so you know, uh, land, naval, air, but there's actually a fourth, and that's support units. Okay, and if you look down here, transports, landing ships, supply oiler, supply truck, 
uh, air transport shipyards and we'll get into some of these as we go along but you get down here merchant marine this would allow uh, more stuff to be transported by uh, convoy and then you have escorts and that's what we're dealing with right now so let's get back over here um, right now you know the it's it's hard to decide exactly what we should do here but really south china sea and indonesia we're not going to be doing much with them uh in the future i mean the japanese are going to take this terror you know take that area so really these convoys are kind of uh dead in the water uh you know w with the pun uh so i think really we do five in the bay of bengal uh, five in the end well actually let's do six and six the americans are completely protecting the south pacific uh now the brits get six into the indian ocean and six into the bay, bay of bengal it won't completely protect those convoys you need to have 10. so let's go back to the u.s and now the u.s you can see what the brits did they've got their six and six um and let's put uh, see we don't have any convoys okay so we don't have any convoys there we can't put any escorts there and it doesn't do us any good to put more than 10 so we have a trade agreement with australia we're sending it through the south pacific that's it that's where we have to have all of our escorts we also know that the americans don't really need to build any more escorts now the brits may want to to fully protect Indian Ocean and Bay of Bengal and you may say well where are we talking about here well if I hover over this convoy route this is Indian Ocean and if I hover over this one from Calcutta to Rangoon and beyond this I bet you is Bay of Bengal and if you look down to the left sure enough that is Bay of Bengal convoy route uh, and so we may want to think in our building queue okay the Brits are going to do a lot of shipping into here maybe we want to go over here to support and build one more group of escorts how much do they cost he asks well it costs 40 okay one logistics now one thing i did want to mention is that logistics are an ongoing thing it's not like you pay one once and that's it everything you have on the map has a logistic value and that continues on and it keeps you from just building unlimited units right you've only got so many logistics points to handle all of the units you have but this costs one logistics one manpower one shipyard okay well we have 61 in our stockpile uh you know this is something we may want to build with the brits a few more escorts now with escorts you get 10 i believe um for each one of these that you you know quote unquote build now it takes 210 days and so if we did purchase this oh whoa 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 we don't have enough shipyards to build this interesting that's because we have zero in our stockpile now you may say we have 340 but we don't that is what will be done this turn so when we hit next turn this will all jump over to the stockpile so we'll have to wait to build so right now we have zero shipyards the british were not ready for this war to start out in uh you know the far east to them and so they just didn't have shipyards ready to go to put escorts so very interesting okay uh i thought we were going to be able to do that but actually now that i look at it no we can't so we can't build that with the brits but we'll come back and see what the brits can build so we've got these destroyers along here because they also help you hunt submarines uh that's what they're going to be out here to do now that i look back on it i kind of wish i would have put these destroyers on the australia loop and what do i mean by that you can move a unit into this that says australia and the next turn it will show up down by australia uh, it just is a very handy way to get things moved down there. Um, I say I kind of wish I would have, but actually I guess not. If we do it naturally, we'll be to Australia pretty much next turn, and this moves it and protects the convoy route. And so I guess putting it through the Australia loop for destroyers, you would much rather them be on the convoy route. 
uh, they help protect things. Okay, so we put some infantry units in uh, garrison. Looking back at the man, the one in LA and the one in San Francisco. Looking back at the manual, you know that is in the long term not going to have any effect. Meaning when we go back to active status, they'll pull back. So what does garrison do? It cuts your abilities in half. It cuts your combat value in half and your mobility in half or, or you know, uh, your operation points, how far you can move in half. Um, but we send back 25% of the production oil uh, and supply that we would use. And so in the early game, putting these things to garrison allows you to have more of those things. And then later on, when we're producing more, then we pull them back out when we go to active status. Okay, so I'm still glad I did that. Uh, but it's not like a huge advantage because eventually it's all going to even out. All right, but uh, here at the start, having them on a garrison is fine. Air units, we can't move them uh, right now. So let's go out now. Uh, Midway Island, we put this on, and if we look at the unit, we put this on pri prioritized reinforcements. So it's an infantry di division out here. I would like to build this up. Uh, why not? Let's make it very hard for the Japanese to attack us there. Okay, so let's go to the Hawaiian Islands. Let's go to Pearl Harbor. And quite frankly, there's not a whole lot we can do here. I'm going to keep these active just on the off chance something weird happens and the Japanese try to attack here. I don't know the AI well enough. Now I'm kind of, uh, to, you know, reassured that the manual says that the main Japanese task force will go away and when we when it does we may put these on garrison status as well but for now we're going to keep them active uh, and we have an infantry division that's 8 of 10 okay the USA 24th we've got the USA 25th division it's also 8 of 10 so not bad and we've got the uh, U.S. Marine Corps defense garrison down here at Hilo. That is only a 2 of 10. So that will have to build up. That does happen naturally. It can be affected by us either upping the priority, as I just showed you up here at Midway. Up here at Midway. There it is. We've got the plus there because we put priority on that one. Um, you, we can affect it that way. And it also matters here in reinforcement and upgrades, how much of our production we're gonna put into reinforcements and upgrades next turn. And so for the Brits, we've actually got this quite low, but the Brits don't have a lot of units on the map right now. Uh, we, we'll go look at all the British units, but there's a reason for that. The US actually needs to build up their units quite a bit. And so we've got this really quite high uh, but that's okay, because all of them are under strength right now. I mean, even this one out here is, you know, this one's like 2 of 10. This is 8 of 10. They're not at 10 of 10. And so we're going to go ahead and build those up. You know, it's it's easier. It's actually less expensive to go ahead and build up your existing units than to build new ones. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to build some things for the U.S. They've still got 340 in their stockpile. So we will be going to look at things to build. Uh, that is going to be really kind of determined by what's already in the build queue. We're going to go look at that. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention to you is there are uh, like 14 different specialties that you can eventually build up to and that's called specialty production here you get so many points based on your production every time uh, they're called specialty points and when this gets to a hundred you will be able to spend them on one unit and so let's say we wanted to spend that on the 25th division we could make that an elite unit we could make that an anti-tank, a specialized anti-tank unit. Uh, we could make it a winter unit. We could make it a mountain unit. There are all kinds of different specialties that you can put on these units when you get to 100 specialty points. And you see here, we're getting like 19 a time. So by turn six, assuming it stays at 19, uh, we would be able to add a specialty to one of our units. Now it doesn't have to be infantry. Um, our naval units, we could add a specialty to that. We could also add them to air. For instance, you can put an ace 
uh, like the ACE specialty with one of your air units, and it gives them, I believe, like a 10% combat bonus. Uh, so there's different specialties that will be able to add to these units. I really like that. Uh, it lets you play the game kind of the way you want. Okay, so what are the main things we've done? Uh, we've looked around the build screen. We haven't really built anything yet. We've got convoys. The Brits are sending um, this amount to India. We set this up as a trade agreement to send to India. We need to build units in India. We cannot ship any of the British units in because they don't. we don't have any transports yet. Uh, and so we've got to build Indian units. We've got to send as much as we can. And we did that from uh, the UK to India. You see it here. The United States is sending everything it can the maximum to australia through that south pacific convoy route we've got to build australian units because the japanese are pushing hard already already they're all over us okay uh so let's go here to honolulu uh we're not going to do anything with the infantry we're not going to do anything with uh the carriers we're going to let them sit here now in port they cannot be offensive but they will always be defensive, all right? And so if they get attacked in port, they're going to throw up their normal defenses, uh, but they can't attack out here. As you see, we can hover over here with all of our naval groups, and it won't give us the attack button. Uh, we, you know, we can't right-click. If we do try to right-click here, it says can't occupy the same hex as an enemy fleet. Okay, if we took one step out of port, we could, and I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, let's go here, and let's take off, um, unselect all groups, select all submarine groups, all right? Because we're going to take, whoops, shoot, sorry. Uh, we're going to take, well, shoot. Let's just do this uh, manually then. We're going to take this submarine squadron um, out of port. We want to get the submarines going. We're going to put them in Japanese convoy lanes, just like we're protecting with destroyers. We want to take our submarines and mess with their shipping, right? And so we're going to click on the swordfish here. Why don't we look at the unit details? It's a submarine group. Okay. Three of three strength, 54% experience. Uh, that built a little bit because it got attacked at Pearl Harbor. Nothing bad happened, luckily. 97% uh, effectiveness. It has two operation or movement points, if you will. Long range submarine 1940. What exactly does that mean? We'll go to that. It's got a level two surface, level six defense, uh, three range. It can attack from a three range, and it uses one oil. Uh, per turn, okay? Um, if it's not in port. If it's in port, it doesn't use any oil. Uh, but if it's out of port, it will use one per turn. Look down here. The swordfish has eight turns of supply, so we will have to move it back to a level five or above port uh, within eight turns or at the eighth turn, okay? This is its experience again. This is its effectiveness and hit points. All right, excellent. Um, let's move this out and let's back up and you can see how far it can move with one operate. That's just one operation point. But let's right click here and let's go down and figure out exactly what we want to do. Now that could attack within three hexes of it. So if the Japanese are moving things down here, let's say troop transports, and we saw that, we could, it is, but I will say this, it's very hard to detect things at sea. It's one of those things I think the game is really looking like it does well. Uh, your detection levels just aren't that strong. Now, what I think I want to do is set up this sub out here in the South China Sea. This is where the Japanese have a lot of their shipping, right? And if we put it, let's say, on this hex or this hex, we're getting their shipping coming south and maybe bending towards the Philippines or the shipping that's continuing on and going over here to Malaya <clears throat> or coming down to Borneo. So I think that's where we want to put, you know, this submarine at least that's coming out of Pearl Harbor. Now we could also use it to protect, let's say, Johnston Island, Canton Island. 
uh, but we're not going to do that. Uh, so let's deselect everything. Again, it always selects everything. <clears throat> let's pick the swordfish and let's get it moving out here as far as we can. And there you see her go. She's off. She's off. Um, and so she's used an oil point, oil use one. She's got that eight supply. That's really what we'll have to uh, watch there. Okay. Um, so we want it to be here in the South China Sea. We're just going to keep taking it kind of, you know, this way. If we kind of run, you know, it's going to be hidden right now. Uh, it, it shouldn't be detected unless something just really runs right over the top of it. So we're going to move it out this way. Now, one thing we talked about was long range. So let's go to the naval things that you can build. Let's go to submarine group and let's look at what it describes when it says long range submarine. Oh, whoops, my fault. It's actually over here at the advancement screen. Advancement screen. So let's click down here on long range submarine. Now submarines can go down two different paths. They can either be attack submarines, and in this case, the Brits have 1941 attack submarines, and their long range submarines are 39. But we're dealing with the United States sub, which is attack submarine 41, okay. Long range submarine 41. Now we still have all 43 research points. We have not allocated those yet. We'll have to come back and do that. But let's click on long range submarine and see what this is all about. Long range submarines, they have a larger hull, more endurance, uh, more payload, and 50% more supply capacity. Okay, so essentially long range submarines aren't quite as good as co at combat as the attack submarine, but they have more range, they can carry more, uh, they have a lot more supply. They are meant to go over here by the Japanese islands or over by the Philippines and try to disrupt Japanese shipping. And so that's what we're doing. If we look at attack submarine, attack submarines rely on stealth, dive speed, evasion, and payload. They really are to go after surface fleets out here, right? So the main Japanese surface fleet, if we got crazy and we really wanted to attack that, we would rather do it with an attack submarine, you know, something that had gone down this tech tree uh, rather than a long range submarine. And you can see the differences if you click on it. All right, so we've got our submarine on its way out of Pearl. Let's see what else we've got here. We have got carriers, two carriers. Now these are, are essentially floating airfields uh, in this game. They will be running uh, air ops, air combats of five. Okay, that all looks good. Now. This is up here, fleet or raider. We'll talk about this at some point. We could break these two off if we wanted to, but for protection, we might as well keep these all together. So we've got uh, six battleship groups, which is a lot, uh, seven battleship groups. We've got a heavy cruiser group, another heavy cruiser, three heavy cruiser groups. Then we have this destroyer squadron, Okay, and this says group is bottomed in port. And what all this means is, is that it is it didn't sink. It got hit, but it didn't sink. And this will be able to be repaired, but it can't move. It can't do anything. So sometimes when things take damage, you can still move them about and you can, you know, take them other places, other ports, etc. When they are bottomed out, uh, they go down to essentially nothing and they have to build back up. You can see this is one of three. It's going to sit here and try to repair. We could give this greater than normal reinforcements. And I think we will. Why not? Let's build this up. And then we have another one here. And let's give that priority as well. And then we have more light cruiser DD squads. We will get these out on combat or on uh, convoy routes. And we'll also get them ringing Hawaii so that the Japanese, you know, they will be out here hunting subs. All right, so the Japanese can't come in here and attack something or troop transports or otherwise 
uh, we will be out hunting subs with those destroyer groups. But for now, we're not going to do anything else. And let's go to the air group then. And what's the air group up to? It's an air superiority group. So it's an air to air group, right? They're fighters. And as you see, this lights up red. We could go attack this. Why is that? It's within our range or we have a range of six. Uh, we do not want to do that. <laughs> so we are, we are going to change something though. So we've got this on bomb naval. And if we kept this on mission only, we that's why this lit up. We're on mission only, means it will only take missions from us, the game will. It won't do anything independently. But if we flip this over to full support, what this means is it will not go out and attack this task force independently but it will defend it will be up in the air essentially running cap that's what this is full support is like cap when you have uh, air superiority groups now if you have full support for tactical bombers they will give ground support to your ground units okay um but for fighters and that's what this is, or at least they have air superiority. They're an air superiority group. Uh, you see it here, level two. Um, they are going to put up cap. That's what they're going to do. And so if the Japanese decide to fly back here, we will have planes in the air running defense. And we do want that because we've got a lot of ships here that are sitting ducks. All right. So that does it for Pearl Harbor. There's nothing really else to do. We've got all of those ships sitting there, and we will eventually, of course, do stuff with them. Now, there is a next unit, uh, but that takes us all the way back there. So we're not going to jump around. We're going to go look for all the United States units. We'll do them first. You see our submarine out here. Uh, steam, our submarine. Our submarine group. I'm going to make sure I say group because it is not a single submarine. This is a wolf pack. Let's put it that way. Uh, Canton, you know, these guys are probably doomed, but we are going to put them on prioritized reinforcements if we can and make it tough for the Japanese. The Japanese will probably be over here this turn. And so, you know, who knows if that's going to really work. Uh, we don't have any units back here. You see our destroyer group or squad coming this way down the South Pacific. Uh, we do have a unit or an infantry unit here at Pago Pago. It's actually, uh, it's oh wow, this is just a battalion it says, but it's got 10 hit points. So it's really a division for purposes of the game. I think they just wanted to give it a, you know, the actual name uh, at the start of, you know, the Pacific War and World War II. I just think they were trying to be historically accurate here. But they've got it set up as a division, you know, level strength. And so, okay, cool. Uh, we've got that at Pago. Uh, we've got at Tonga, these are British troops, the 114th garrison out here at Tonga. And they're in uh, garrison mode. Okay, that works. Then we come over to Suva, and you see these Kiwi troops. New means New Zealand. Uh, now that's the color of New Zealand here. I don't think we can change our, our counter colors. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think I want to, but uh, it would be nice to have the option. If you want New Zealand to be a deep blue or Australia to be a deep blue or something, uh, and the Americans to be a more olive green, if you're that visual with it, uh, it would be nice to have that option, I think. Um, or maybe just like the national flag on the counter as the colors. Sure. Have the Union Jack back here. Um, okay. So Tonga's got some stuff. Suva. What the heck's going on at Suva as we continue our tour from east to west? Nothing to do here at Pago. They're sitting there in garrison. We're automatically sending them supplies. Okay. Cool. Uh, now we're on here. Um, it looks like, so we have a full infantry division here for the Kiwis. And what else do they have down here? They actually have two. They have two. And they're showing us Wellington and Auckland. Now this is one of those areas I think is a little compressed or doesn't look quite right to me. 
Uh, but that's okay. This is New Zealand, uh, those crazy Kiwis. And okay, so we've got a unit sitting in Wellington, one sitting in Auckland. We could probably put this on garrison if we want. I don't know how much the Kiwis are going to be able to build. Uh, let's go out here to... Are they even represented? I, oh yeah, there we go. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not as familiar with the flags as I should be. I look here and I think that's Australia, and then it's not, and I, I get confused easily. So New Zealand has three. It has a stockpile of eight. All right. So the Brits or the Americans are going to have to send New Zealand something for them to build any more units. Uh, I'll keep this one in Auckland active. There's really nothing else to do here. We've got two. Uh, land counters with nowhere to go. They've got no transports, obviously. If we look at the build queue, what do they have coming? No units to destroy. Or destroy, Deploy. Deploy, he said. Uh, so they have nothing in the building queue. But what do they have out here? They've got the uh, 8th Brigade, they're calling it, but it's really a division uh, for purposes of the game, a 6 of 10. You know, it doesn't look like the strongest unit of all time, but it looks just kind of like a normal unit. So they are hunkered down here on Suva, which I have a feeling will become very important. Then they have a bombing group, and this is kind of interesting. We've got tactical bombers out here. They only have a strength of five. I think... Nah, I'll leave that as is. The, the Kiwis don't have enough... Uh, points to really start prioritizing like that, right? They need to kind of build up what they can. Uh, okay, we're, we're going to leave this group here, but one thing we're going to do is take it off mission, which is where we would give it the mission to bomb naval units, and we're going to put it on full operation. That way, if it spots anything out here within its range, which is a 10, I mean, that's quite far. Oh, there is a, a, a shortcut. So let's hit R. There we go. Uh, we can see we can see the range for air units, and so this is the range for this tactical bombing group. And you can see how far out here they can get. I know that will get people that love War in the Pacific all excited. Another game that finally has range, but other than uh, that game and Command, you know, uh, operations. Those are the only two games I can think of that have these awesome range finders, <clears throat> at least that look like this, the elliptical ones. Okay, and so we're going to put that on full support. We'll turn it a little bit over to AI discretion. If something moves in here, are we going to bomb it? Uh, great. All right, and this group has a five air combat, so there are some fighters in here. Uh, they're calling them a tactical bombing group, but as you can see here, they're just kind of a vanilla group. They're really good at naval air, so they are good at hitting naval air assets. I almost want to give them a... Okay, fine, I'll give them a priority. I want to build that up because I know Japanese forces will come here, and I want them to bomb the heck out of them. Okay, that made me feel better. Uh, let's get back on the map. We'll get off of that. And we get to the next place that there are American units here. And I'm just, I'm just checking the map because we're kind of going from east to west. Let's go here to Nomaya. And here at Nomaya, the U.S. has a Nomaya defense force. It's already in garrison mode. It does not have much going on. We got to give that some priority. Uh, we've got to build that up if we can. All right, so it doesn't have much capability. It's got a strength of two. You see firearms, guns, artillery. So this is a really a kind of a, a close fighting force. Artillery is furthest away. Guns are like anti-tank, uh, mortars, things like that. Firearms are really, you know, man-to-man, -man you know, firing across the field with your rifles. That is firearms. They only have a one entrenchment. That will go to a two automatically if they do not move. Uh, so that will build up to a two. And as you can see, this has got a special ability. And it's something we haven't seen yet. Uh, but this is what it looks like. And you can see it right here on the left corner. And if I, whoa, come on now. If I zoom in, you can see here their special ability is engineer. Do I know what that means? 
Not really. I, I could go read the rule book. Uh, when we come back next time, I will tell you exactly what that means. But I don't think... Is there a um, special production? I don't think there's a screen where I can just go read to you. These are reports, combat log. Oh, yeah, we need to go look at the combat log. I don't think it's in advancements either, because this really has to do with what tech tree they're going down. That, what we're seeing there with engineers, is a special, you know, specialty here. Uh, and so I'm sure they build up, like, entrenchment levels faster. They maybe make the port grow. Uh, so Nomaya is a level three port. I don't know. I'm going to have to go read it. I'm sorry. You know, I wish I had it off the top of my head, but I can't, because I'm recording this, I can't go just look very easily. So we'll come back to that. That all looks fine, though. It's on garrison. That's what we want. We already looked at New Zealand. And now let's get to the Aussies. And the Aussies have an infantry core, a full core, uh, a large core down here. This will give us a chance to split units, all right? And so we don't need a full core at Melbourne. We probably only need a division, maybe two, but I, I, I really don't want to get crazy with this. So we do have troops at Perth. Uh, what do we have at Sydney? We've only got one infantry division at Sydney. At Brisbane, we have another Infantry Corps large. Okay, we're going to probably split that one. We have no troops at Darwin. We've got to take care of that. We've got to take care of that. And I think um, originally these Melbourne troops will come up here and we'll split one division off. Okay. And then we'll split a second division off. There you go. And now we've got three divisions. Now, if we wanted to put these back together, we would hit the Alt key. So we... You know, we would hit the Alt, and when we did, we would right-click here, and these two units would combine. They would recombine. Uh, this means it's going to have... Can we move this? Yes. Okay, and this is how we move by rail. I hit it there, and it's got like 30 operational points. And we're going to send this unit up to Darwin, uh, because Darwin's just so dang important. All right, so we've got that. Now, we want to make sure we have something left at Melbourne, um, but it's a question where we send this other division. I don't know if we really need to protect these things. It makes me feel odd. I don't think the Japanese will come all the way down here, though, so I think I'm going to go ahead and move this by rail. Um, and of course, yeah, here we are. This is as far as the rail goes this way, but we can move things by rail this way. And I think we're going to move that division up here to Carnes. All right. So there we go there. And then we'll just move that right back into Melbourne. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, I, I feel kind of strange not having this protected. Why is that? I don't know. You're like, why do you feel strange? I, I, don't, I don't know, Dojo. Uh, we've got a headquarters here. Okay, this is Australian Command. The big boys. The, the boys that get the nice uniforms and the good MREs. Okay, so we're going to move them here close to Sydney. Of course, Australia does not have any transport craft, so we can't get anything off the island here. Now, we do want a division at Sydney, so we're going to leave that right here. But let's go up to Brisbane, and let's split this into three divisions, because it was an infantry corps large. And we're going to take one of these divisions, and we'll rail it. As you can see, the amount of rail points is going down. You only have so many. Now, you know, I haven't played the game enough to get a real feel for how many you do want to use or don't want to use, etc., etc. But we're going to move one of this these up to Townsville. And then you can see we're down to 15. Last time there was 22. You can't overburden the rail. But this unit, we're going to move this way. And we're going to move these two divisions out here to Darwin. And we're going to actually reform them into a small core. We'll put them together. And we'll move this back into Brisbane. Okay. So Brisbane. And you'll notice Brisbane's only a size 4 port. Sydney is the only five or above, this is where you have to go to get repairs for naval uh, pretty much all the way. I mean, 
there's just no other place. Pearl Harbor, Sydney, U.S. West Coast. Uh, you know, we've already lost uh, in Java. I don't even th I don't even know if Suru Baya in or in the Pacific, it is a level, you know, a high level. Here it's a level four. So I guess we could have maybe had this build up with engineers potentially, uh, but too late, too late. Uh, they've already taken it. Uh, in Perth, we have an infantry division, the third RA coastal. That's great. That's all we need. There's nothing else we're going to do over there. It's not all we need, but it's all we have. So we're not going to do anything else. All right, let's get back into Sydney here. We've got our division. Let's left click again. And we have the Australia Canberra Cruiser Squad. Okay, what do they do well? Well, they're pretty decent on the surface. That's for sure. Uh, they've got, uh, you know, a seven. That's that's pretty good. You know, it's not, you know, seven out of ten. Um you, it's got a little bit of anti-sub, so there must be some destroyers here in the squad. A little bit of anti-air. I wish that anti-air was better. I really want to use that as anti-air out here by Nomaya, but uh, two's not really getting it done. That being said, I do want to kind of move up this way, uh, maybe kind of here in this straight, and if any... Japanese subs come this way will be a hunting so I'm going to put it right there that's the Canberra okay the Canberra group it's not just the Canberra uh, what else do we have here tactical group more tactical bombers now they do have a range of 10 I've got my range up now look how great that looks god dang it I like that now how we could fly these guys a long ways I don't think we need them in Sydney now maybe we do for anti-submarine stuff because the Japanese will absolutely flood the zone with submarines here but I think maybe taking them further up this way makes a great deal of sense and so we're going to fly them all now we don't have to put them in a town <clears throat> we could actually put them all the way over here and they make kind of a temporary out uh oh oh oil use is three We've only got one. Wow. Okay. So let's go look at Australia. Um, yeah. Australia only has a stockpile of one oil. Holy cannoli. We have got to get oil into Australia. Well, we're trying. When we do that, we will take this tactical group. Now then, can we rail them? We can rail them. Okay. Yes. We can put them on the railroad. Choo-choo. Here we go. And... Um, we do want to, before I forget, I want to flip that over here, but we're going to move them by rail and we're going to put this air unit in Darwin. I think that's the best place to use them. And I think that pretty much wraps up Australia. We move some things around here. Uh, we've got nothing else to move. I mean, we can go look at this unit in Perth, but it's just, I mean, it's an infantry division. It is what it is. Uh, but the Aussies do have more units. Uh, they have a unit at our favorite, Port Moresby. I'm going to, I swear to you, I am going to Port Moresby someday. Uh, I, I've said the words Port Moresby so many dang times in my life now that I absolutely will be going there someday. We are going to turn them to active why are we going to do that? Well, because the Japanese are already in Rabal. We've got to get them active, ready here. I'd like they're at a two entrenchment level. Unfortunately, they're at 1939 assault. This is the portion where I say you can change this. You can change the unit unit advancement, <clears throat> but it costs you. All right. It sets the unit back, it costs production, it costs oil, we just don't have enough. And so we're not going to turn them over to a defensive unit, the Japanese are here. The time for that is past. We are ready for action. Okay, was that uh, dramatic enough? Uh, yes, in Port Moresby, it is what it is. We turn them to active, they're waiting for the Japanese to attack now, and I think the Japanese here will be, ver will be here very quickly. Okay, there's one other thing I want to do with the Aussies. Now, the United States is sending, and uh, let's go to Australia. The United States is sending a lot of production over here and some oil, okay? 
But the Aussies have a little stockpile. Not, not a lot, not a ton. They've got five, okay? I want to put all five of those. Well, how far will this... Oh, I guess we could just go limitless, uh, but we're not going to do that. I want to put five... Why is it doing that? Shift. Yeah, it goes up by tens with shift. Oh, it goes up by 50s with control. Okay, well, I'm going to put it on 13. That's fine. Maybe it will uh, add it to this. I don't think so. It will only put as many to, as are in the stockpile. But we're going to reinforce and upgrade with all five of these production points. And we're going to put Port Moresby on a priority uh, because they're about to get hit. Okay, and let's actually go back to any Australian units that we have on priority. I don't think we have any, but I just want to make sure that we haven't prioritized anything else. And this will give Moresby, it will allow it to repair a little bit. If we look at uh, Moresby, it's at a 5 of 10. I would love to get this up to like a 7, an 8, something like that. So when the Japanese get to Moresby, they got a little something to worry about. Now we got the Canberra here. We could come around here maybe and take out some uh s or uh, some some transport ships but i think or landing craft is what they're called in this game but i'm pretty sure they will have a force that are bringing those in all right uh do the aussies have any uh, more troops out here no that's it that's it for the aussies and so you know it's a really condensed consolidated game here uh, you know, you know, we would have spent, what did we spend, uh, hours setting up Australia in war in the Pacific. In this case, we just did it in about 15 or 20. It's one thing I like the ease of use here. Now we have, um, a unit in the Philippines for the Americans here at Davao. It's going to sit here. I mean, it, it's, you know, 20 of 20. It's an infantry corps small. I actually do think I may split it up. Do I dare? And if I do, do I put the other division there or there? It's actually a really good question. Um, I think I'll put it there. Let's actually split these in two. Okay, that works for me. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not strong by any stretch of the imagination. But the Japanese are probably going to come this way if they come. And so let's do that. All right, now they've completely surrounded all this out here. We have an infantry corps large. I mean, this is a big, big unit here. Uh, we could try to divvy this up. Um, hmm. Is the, again, this is a South Luzon force. It's a Filipino force. They're not very strong. Uh, they're not going to be able to hold out, but I, I wouldn't mind putting a scrap up. We have an infantry division here. We really need another one up here. Now, this is an American infantry division. 423151. 423151. The infantry corps large for the Filipino unit seems to be the exact same stats. Am I right about that? As, as the American division. Okay, let's split this into three. So there's one, and there's two. And that's actually perfect. This is kind of how I wanted them to be. And we'll pop this up here. Uh, sure, we'll let you attack them first. You kind of got to go through two layers. We're just going to try to slow them down. And what do we have here? Oh, another infantry corps large. Nice. They're not They're not good. Uh, I mean, you can see here, 312. Uh, an American division is 423, but uh, okay, it is what it is. These are what the 1939 assault looks like uh, for the Filipino units. All right. Um, okay, let's split this one up too. Let's just cause as many you know headaches as we can for the Japanese players. So now we've got divisions. Uh, you know, it may be a tougher nut to crack to do it the other way, but I, I honestly don't even know. So we're just going to try this out, put as many divisions out here as we can, and just kind of try to mess with them a little bit. Now, what else do we have here? Let's do the air before we do the naval. So we've got a tactical bombing group here. So essentially ground support. And if I turn this over to full support, they're going to go out here and try to support the infantry within 
uh, 10, wow, 10 range. Uh, that is, I'm going to get them out of here. You're like, what? Yeah, we're going to take this group out of here. So if I do 10 next turn, I could probably do another 10 onto one of these islands. I think I can get them all the way to Darwin. And that's really what I just want to get them out of here. They, they, you know, they're not going to do any good here. We're eventually going to get uh, roasted up here. The Japanese are going to take the Philippines. Let's get this bomber unit out. It's, it, uh, has, oh, it only has a 10 range. Okay. So we, you know, it's got an operation point, but it only had 10 range where we've gone 10. So that is that we could have gone one more god i love the range circles man that makes me happy um thank you alvaro susa for putting range circles in here okay what do we have naval in uh manila we've got a cruiser and we've got oh nice we've got two submarine squads excellent excellent i like that um 14 on the oil. They've got four supply. Oh, these must be assault. No? No? Hold on. Uh, okay, they're just starting out with four supply. Manila was undersupplied. The Japanese are here. We're being blockaded a little bit. So they've only got four days of supply. They're also, the pike is only a strength of one of three. We're going to take the pike all the way to Sydney. Uh, I don't think there's any other place we can take it. Well, we could take it out to Colombo. Is Colombo closer? Colombo is a level six port. It's actually a good question. Is that closer than Sydney? I think maybe it is. Uh, or is it? Oh gosh, am I really going to go try to count this? Yeah, it can almost get to Sydney here uh, with two, with the second operation point. But it can get all the way out here with two. It's almost to Colombo. Okay, let's go back here and try this one again. It gets one to here, and then I think the second one maybe takes it. It's kind of almost equidistant a little bit. Is that right? Uh, I actually think I'm going to take this to Colombo. Never done that with the sub before in this game. Uh, uh, okay, hold on. I think I was trying to take it out with the Houston. Sorry. Uh, yeah, we got to take the Houston and the Skipjack out of there. So it's just the uh, Pike. Sorry. Um, okay, two. We'll get it as close to Colombo as we can. We'll bring it all the way out here. Uh, now, you may be saying, how? why are you not looking what it's moving past? It could get blown up. It really can't. It, uh, that's not how it works in this game. There aren't like surprise attacks. You move your counters. It's no different than a board game. If I would have picked up the counter, I would have measured it and I would have set the counter down here. You see it move, but it's not, it's, you know, it's not like, oh gosh, we ran into this. Okay. It will go around those things and end up at the destination. And so we're gonna bring that into Colombo. We're gonna get a little bit of oil, not much. Gosh, maybe that is why I should have gone to Sydney. Uh, but that's okay, that's okay. We're not gonna, we're not gonna be upset. We're not gonna get upset about it. <laughs> I'm actually not that upset. I, I just like to make it sound like I might be. Um, okay, and we're gonna take the skipjack which has three of three, it's only got four days of supply. We'll have to really monitor this, but I'm gonna put it here, which is right on the convoy lanes through the South Pacific. Uh, I'm sorry, silly me, the South China Sea. Uh, and we're moving another American sub over here as well. I do believe, what is the skipjack? Let's look at this. It is also a long range sub. So the American subs, it seems generally at this point anyway, are long range subs. Okay, let's go to the Houston cruiser. The Houston is on one of three. We've got to take it somewhere to get repaired. Uh, this time we actually are going to go to Sydney. There's one operation point. And how far can we go with the second? 
Uh, I really don't even want it to be in combat with the submarine or anything else. So I'm going to bring it like, you know, here and then we'll go into Sydney next time. Okay, so we've got all the naval assets out of Manila. Uh, we do have several divisions in Manila and we've got the air gr group moving out. We're probably going to take that down to Darwin. I don't see the other plan that makes sense. Uh, where else do we have any units up here? There's our sub. I, I love the counters in this game. Gosh, what a board game feel this is, and I love it. Absolutely love it. The next place to look for is Batavia, and I think, okay, so these are Dutch units. We've got to flip this over to active. See, no, he doesn't have any entrenchment. This is not good terrain to be defending. It's just clear. I wish he was back in woods. I actually wish he was in the mountains, to be honest with you. Uh, Garrison, we've got to pop him up to a better... Oh. The Dutch don't have enough saved production to convert him back. Well, I say convert him back. I didn't convert him. He was already a garrison. They've only got three production. Ay, 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 ay. Uh, okay. Well, there's nothing we can do. I mean, I, we, we've just got to drop him back here. Okay. This other Dutch unit, I don't think we can bring that down. Yeah, we don't have enough production. Interesting. So next turn... But if we can protect this unit, we can get it to active. Okay, and I guess that's our big hope. Uh, is that a hope? I don't know. The Japanese are all over us here in Java. I was not expecting that. But we will try to get this infantry. We're actually going to put this on priority for the Dutch and try to get this reinforced a little bit. Let's go back to the build queue. Let's go to the Dutch East Indies. Uh, see what kind of stock. Okay, we've got a three stockpile and we'll be producing three. We'll have six next time. I don't know if that's going to be enough to get that out of garrison status, but I, I really don't know what. I mean, there's nothing. I say I don't know what to do about it. There is nothing else to do about it. So, okay, on we go. Um, let's look at the air. Or, no, 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 I'm sorry. Let's look at the naval. We've got the Dutch de Reuter light cruiser fleet or flotilla they're going to call this a flotilla it's got a five surface five anti-sub two anti-air five defense one you know one range to attack and it uses one oil this is not this is nothing to keep around here let's take this out to colombo and put it with other like mines so it will actually go into this naval counter Okay, and when we click on that naval counter, you will now see the De Reuter here, uh, but it's grayed out because it's used all of its uh, operation points, and that's kind of how that works. Uh, let's go look at the air unit we have here, which is an air superiority group, 20 of 20 strength. It's actually got a really nice, this is the Dutch DEI, Dutch East Indies Air Force. It's got a nice air combat here, tactical uh, do I dare set this on cap, or do I get it out of here? It's a great question. We could move it over here to Bally Poppin, um, but we don't have any land units over here. The Japanese are essentially going to just march over here and take Bally Poppin. Uh, we could put it on Macassar and kind of mess with any uh, you know convoys they have coming through here. We could try to get it down here for one. I don't think you can get all the way to Darwin, but it could land on one of these little islands out here. I think for this turn, let's put it on full support, so it will run a cap over this. I don't think they have any carriers out here, even light carriers. Now, I could be wrong about that. What? Three ships. Oh, these are battleships. Okay, we see that. One ship, it's a battle group. Okay, so a battle group, in a battle group now those do have anti-air but when we have this on full support we're just going to be playing defense right and so if we get a unit gets attacked it gets bombed from somewhere uh we will have cap up above it that's the dutch force here air superiority i like it uh doo -doo 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 -doo. 
Let's look at this really quickly. It's 20 of 20. It's on good strength, so let's do it. Fantastic. Let's go up to Singapore. And here in Singapore, we have an infantry core small. So we could break this apart. We also, oh, we can't set it to active. Uh, that's got nothing to do with anything we've done. That's a game mechanic. They're just not allowing you. That To them, this is a garrison, period. That, that's what it is. Uh, we have an infantry division here, and we have an infantry division there. Okay, let's just try to get in their way. You know, we'll just try to kind of move down here and get in their way the best we can. Moving back to Singapore, are we going to split this up? Yeah, let's split it up. Okay, so we've got one out here before Singapore. We'll try to hold them off. We'll try to get this unit back. We'll try to do something just to slow them down. I don't think there's anything else we can do. Um... These are Indian units, by the way. So 3rd Indian Corps was down here by Singapore. These are Indian units. Indian 20th, uh, Indian 8th Mixed Brigade Group. Uh, 28th Mixed Brigade. Okay, that's fine. I mean, it doesn't really matter what they are. You can see the Japanese unit here. We have perfect detection on it. It seems uh, it's got a 13 effective combat value so you know our little ones and twos and what it's not going to make a whole bunch of difference we'll just try to slow them down what do we have here naval we've got the repulse yes the repulse and the prince of wales gosh that makes me happy and we've got the 11th dd flotilla for some anti-sub stuff what is it five and five okay it's very consistent um prince of wales and repulse we're going to move out here together in the same fleet they're obviously going straight to Colombo to get with their brethren, and now they'll be in that naval counter. Uh, you see we've got one carrier group here. That is the Hermes. Uh, you may, if you watch the War in the Pacific, you know the Hermes just hides here at Colombo. That's basically what it does. We've got the Revenge uh, Battleship Squad. We've got now the Repulse and the Prince of Wales in here. Uh, these are strong, strong. I mean, look at the Prince of Wales. It's got a 12 surface. Now, I've been saying it's 1 to 10. This bad boy says, nope, 10, you can't contain me. I'm going to 12. Uh, now, normally it's kind of 10, but uh, here we've got a 10 on the Repulse. This is a battle cruiser. Uh, it's treated very much the same as a battleship. Uh, repulse, okay, it's got 4 or 4 strength. What's the deal with the Wales? Uh, two of four, but sitting here in Colombo, it will build up with reinforcement points or points that are put, put towards reinforcement. Uh, shoot, this thing uses a lot of oil. Holy man. Man alive. Uh, the Brits, yeah, I mean, that's just going to tear down their oil uh, capacity, moving that dang Prince of Wales around. But holy smokes, it's got a lot. It's got a lot of firepower. I like it. Let's see now, then what else do we have here? We've got the, D oh, that's right, the DD Flotilla. Why don't we go submarine hunting near Rangoon? That's always fun. Um, we're gonna, So we're going to bring this D&D &D Flotilla. I say D&D &D like it's Dungeons and Dragons. The Destroyer Flotilla. We don't want to have it near Lantex. Um, let's put it somewhere like here just outside of Calcutta. It will go up to up to 12 hexes hunting submarines. That looks good. Okay, uh, so we've done Singapore or Malaya. I don't really think there's more we can do there. We've got this group at Bandan. Can the Dutch flip this to active? Nope, they don't have enough production. We already kind of knew that. We had tried it down here. I was, I was pressing my luck and saying, uh, is there some difference here? No. Madan, uh, we've got a garrison. You know, it may help slow something down. I doubt it. We could also take it down here and try to protect Palembang. I think that's... Could I have done that? By... Let's undo that. Can I undo? Yeah, let's undo that. Uh, it's back up in Madan now. Let's try to move that by rail. Oh, we can. Yes. We can get it just one hex further. Is that really one hex further? Eh. Well, we're going to try it. We're going to move it down here and try to protect Palembang. I don't think we'll ever get there in time. 
but we're going to try. What is this little resource? What is that? Uh, that is oil. I guess it's of some port. No, it's a supply depot. Oh, there are supply depots out here that will, are they, they kind of act like relay stations from main supply sources. And we can turn on supply. And you see here, you know, two, three, blah, 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 blah. This is nine because it's a supply depot. Cool. That's awesome. So then it, it up the rail that you see here, it does nine all the way up the rail. Uh, but this is a supply depot. That's what this is on the map. You see also here Singapore, uh, not in good supply at all. We talked about this in the, in the rules. And those rules were basically if Kuala Lumpur was taken, and it has been, right? That's Kuala Lumpur? No. That's Kuala Lumpur. Oh, it's considered Japanese territory, though, because they're next to it. You can see that in yellow. This is their territory. Kuala Lumpur has been taken. Uh, what were the other ones? I think maybe Kota Baru. Sorry, I don't remember. Oh, it's Bandar Lumpung, which we call Oosthaven in War in the Pacific. I, evidently, uh, research has been done and said, well, let's call this by what the people native to Sumatra called it uh, and not what the Dutch called it. I, I'm just guessing, but Oosthaven doesn't sound like something that the tribes of Sumatra named uh, this town. They probably called it Bandar Lumpung. Uh, the Dutch came in and said, hey, that looks like an Oosthaven to me. Uh, right. So anyway... They have already taken those spots, so it's killing our supply. It's just a special rule of the game. Don't, you know, tax your brain thinking about it too much. Essentially, you know, that cut off some supply to us in Singapore. Um, before I go any further up into China and over into India, those actually won't take us that long. India won't take long at all. China might take a little longer if we back up and look at China. But I have a pretty good idea what I want to do in China. Um, I think we can surround this Japanese unit. Uh, I think... Where, where is it? Where is it? Up here. Um, Changsha. Here it is. This is that big Japanese unit that kind of went in here. We're just going to go around behind them. Now, we're going to get attacked there, but I'm going to move this out too. I do not want it to close an encirclement on me. So we're going to do everything we can to get this back here in China. Uh, let me turn the supplies off. We're going to do everything we can to get this back here. Uh, but we are going to move one of these up here and try, try to cut this off ourselves. Should be fun. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're uh, enjoying this Let's Play tutorial. I'm enjoying making it because I'm really enjoying playing the game. I can't wait to make the next episode to get deeper into the game. And that's all you can ask for. So anyway, thank you so much. This has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.